Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms. And in today's video, you guys are getting five thrift to treasures. So I went into my stash, pulled out a bunch of items, and I am flipping them in today's video. I cannot wait to hear what you guys all think. For project one, I recently thrifted this at the Goodwill bins and it went into my stash and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it. What I really loved about it was the chunkiness of the frame and initially I was going to just remove this backing and add something else to it but it already fit on here. So what I decided to do was go into my decoupage papers and pull one out that was going to inspire today's video. I dug through all the decoupage papers and I finally settled on this one. It is called Underwood Crate and it is by Roycycled Papers. And all the products I'm using in today's video, you guys, can find on my website at www.sonnetsgardenblooms.com. I lined it up and right away I knew this was the paper that I wanted to use. It fit perfectly in the frame and it had a real moody look to it, just like the frame. What I'm gonna do here is use DIY's Tarnished Pearl, and I'm applying two even coats to cover up the picture. And you don't necessarily need to start with a white background. I do recommend it because it makes your decoupage paper really pop. And what you're gonna see later on in the video, there is at one point I don't use white um, because I wanted to almost have the paper blend. But because there's an image on here, I definitely want to cover that image up. And I really want that underwood crate to pop off the board. So I'm applying two even coats of the tarnished pearl, let it dry really thoroughly, and then we're gonna add the decoupage paper. While that's all drying, I'm using Fusion's Coal Black and I am going to apply one even coat of Fusion to the entire frame. I really like the frame, but I didn't like how the outside and the inside were white. I want it to be completely uniform, so that's what we're going to do. Now that that's drying, I am tackling the decoupage piece. I am taking the portion of the underwood crate. I'm going to cut that off, take the rest of the paper, set it aside for a future project. And what I want to do here is I want to make sure that the underwood crate is even or basically centered in this uh, frame. I want to make sure that there's an, the same exact amount of paper showing above and below the wording and I don't want to cut any of it off. I lay it down, I then put the frame back on top and then once I determine that it's exactly where I want it, I am going to start decoupaging. I'm using Liquid Patina from DIY and this is definitely my go-to decoupage medium with the recycled paper. I am flipping back my paper and then I am doing what I like to call a starter strip. So I apply a nice even layer of the liquid patina on the very end. And then what I'm going to do is lay my paper down and then work my way down. Once I lay that down, I am going to smooth it out with my brush and I'm going to lift the paper up and then, like I said, work my way down in sections. And the key with the decoupage paper and the liquid patina is you want a nice thin coat of liquid patina, not too much. And by doing this, you really prevent your wrinkles and you have better control over your project. 
I have heard other people just lay down the whole liquid patina and try to place the paper. Lots of wrinkles and then there's a possibility of tears when you're trying to reposition your paper. Now that the frame and the decoupage paper are completely dry, it's time to reassemble this. And what I do is I lay it down, I flip it back over, I want to make sure that it is positioned exactly where I want it before I put it back on. I am using my brad nailer and I'm using one inch brad nails. I actually first started with one and a quarter and they were a little bit too long, even though when I lined them up, I thought for sure it would be fine. But thank goodness I only had put one in and I was able to fix that little boo-boo. This was such an easy project to complete with just a little decoupage paper and paint. I was able to completely transform the look and feel of this frame and I know that this is going to sell very quickly in my booth. For project two, I recently thrifted this really cool lamp. It was a stifle lamp and it is a brass color and I wanted to add a shade to it to get it in my booth. I have been wanting to do this project for quite some time. I have been seeing others take apart uh, lampshades and bring them right down to the bare bones. And I actually thrifted some really cool lampshades. They were vintage ones. And when I showcased them on a thrift haul, I was told, don't tear them apart. When I was cleaning out my basement area or storage area, I found this in there. And you guys, this, I was going to donate it. And I'm like, no, this is the perfect lampshade to practice my little project on. So for starters, what I'm doing is I am tearing apart all the old fabric off of this lampshade. And um, please don't, uh, no negative comments about this. This is something that I've wanted to try and I think it's gonna be very cool so I'm sure that some of you out there will think I'm tearing apart a perfectly good lampshade and I probably am somebody probably could have used this but it is definitely um, mine and I've had this for quite a while so it was actually a bit harder to remove all this fabric than it actually looks and it, maybe it does it looks like I'm struggling because I really am and what it took a little bit of elbow grease so I tore I cut uh, but I finally got it all off and then once I removed it what I did was there was like kind of like some glue still on all the metal I took a piece of sandpaper and I sanded it um, like the glue off and other than that I was able to get it it right down to that metal wire. Next, what I did is I used Fusion's Mineral Paint Bronze in the Metallic series. And if you look at the entire metal frame, it is actually silver. Uh, there, It's got some gold on it, but it's silver. And because the actual stifle lamp is bronze, I decided to add that to this frame. So it took me two coats. I applied one coat, I let it dry, then I went back and I, I touched up. It has really great coverage, but there were just a spots here and there where a little bit of silver or the gold was popping through and once I finished this I loved it you guys I think this looks so good and it it just went so nicely with that stifle lamp 
I'm really excited to try this with the other metallic paints as well. So in the future, just so you guys know, I am going to be tearing apart some other lampshades and I am going to be trying some different metallics on those. For project three, when I was cleaning out my basement storage area, I found this glass jar and right away I knew I wanted to use the recycled labels paper on it. And this paper has a whole lot more labels than this, but this is what I have left. I am trying to work through my stash of used transfers, papers, and use them up on different projects. Now, initially I start off by putting this paper on here, or this label, and I thought it fit perfectly, you guys. But I made a mistake and I did not let the label dry before I continued on with the project and I damaged the label. So in the end, I actually grabbed a different label and used it on here. But you're going to see how much I really love the look of this. I thought it went with the whole moody theme. Um... But either label, I think it worked out great. So if you haven't applied a label to a jar, most labels do not have a white backing or anything like that. So there was no need to apply any white paint. I am just applying it directly on the glass jar. I'm using liquid patina. I line it up and then I just do the exact same thing I do with all my other projects. I flip it back and I start applying just a little bit of the liquid patina, lay the label down, smooth it out, and then work my way down. The other thing that I do is I wipe away any of the excess liquid patina that is on the outside of the label. Uh, sometimes a, a little bit got on the glass jar and I just wanted it to look really clean, so I wipe that away. Here's where I moved on to complete this project a little bit too quickly. And at first it was fine. Um, I decided to add a little bit of this twine uh, around the top and I thought it would finish the whole project off and tie it all together. It was just a scrap piece of twine I had so I'm wrapping it around and then when I went to glue it on is when I damaged the paper. I'm using the clear Gorilla Glue and I am squirting a little bit down. I'm using the blue painter's tape to hold the everything in place while it dries. And this all worked out great, guys. I definitely would recommend doing this again. But when I picked it up there and I, see, I smudged it. And that's where I went wrong. And then at first I was like, well old labels it could be like an old jar I'm like no I want it to be perfect so I used a little razor blade I scraped it off and then we're starting over and I cut this out and we're going to apply it the exact same way and I love how this turned out I just really love that first label way better for this project For project four, recently a fellow viewer gave me a bunch of these cedar boards. There are short boards like this and long boards, and I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with them until I saw the Underwood Crate Recycled Decoupage Paper. 
this color of the paper worked perfectly with these cedar boards. So my vision here is I want to use the bottom portion and create a sign. And I think it would look perfect. New York and have that other writing on the bottom. And we're going to create a little shelf sitter with this board. For starters, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the portion of the paper that I'm using and then I'm going to take the rest of it and set it aside for future projects. As you can see, this lines up perfectly and I really love it. I think it's going to look absolutely great. I lined it all up and I'm using liquid patina from DIY. Again, my decoupage medium that I love using with recycled paper. And I slide it back a little bit and I'm going to do that exact same starter strip that I always recommend to you guys. Like I said previously in other videos, it really gives you better control over your paper. So it holds it, like once you line your paper all up, it just holds it in place and allows you to, um, or really eliminates a lot of the wrinkles. So I lay down a little bit of the liquid patina, I smooth out that paper, and then I work my way down. And I love how this goes on, and it really blends with the wood. It, it was like this was part of the wood. Now that it's dry, and that, folks, is something you definitely want. You want your paper to be completely dry. Learn from my mistakes. I have, I'm always trying to move things along a little bit faster and in past projects when I did this step and the paper was a little wet it tore so make sure your paper is completely dry and then in a downward motion with a piece of sandpaper you can get rid of the excess paper and this really gives you a nice crisp clean edge and now um, the other thing that I want to mention is I always have a little bit of an overhang like this for projects and that way if you would have it come you know cut perfectly and even if lining it up it could still your project could move a little bit so by having just a little bit of an overhang and doing this step is exactly what I recommend the very last step is if there was any areas of the decoupage paper that did not get fully down go around reapply just a little bit of that liquid patina under that paper and then smooth it out and I just check all the edges and then I apply one more coat of the liquid patina over the entire piece I let it dry and then this project is complete. The one thing that I was going to do but I could not find wiring um, is I am going to go back and I am going to drill a hole on each side and then insert a little bit of metal wire and like do a little twisty on the front and then that way someone could hang this versus just using it as a shelf sitter. So in the comments let me know what you guys think. Should I add the wire? hanger or should I leave it as is?
for my fifth and final project, I found these in my stash and anytime I'm creating vignettes, I love adding candlesticks and I love being able to paint them any color to fit whatever vignette. I am using weathered wood and I am also using the perfectionist. These have a lot of detail and the perfectionist paintbrush is the perfect tool to get in all that detail. I'm applying two even coats of the weathered wood to these candlesticks, letting them dry very thoroughly in between coats. I chose weathered wood because I was going for a real moody look with this vignette and I thought it was going to be perfect. Now I do want to bring back a lot of that detail as well. So I am going to add a bit of wax to these candlesticks once they are dry and we're going to bring back a lot of that detail. Before we do any waxing, I do want to seal these with Big Top. And what I'm going to do is apply just one even coat of Big Top to both of the candlesticks. Let those dry very thoroughly and then we're going to start waxing. And you may ask why I'm not sealing it with a clear wax. I could have definitely sealed it with the clear wax and then gone in with a, a colored wax. I am, I really just like sealing with Big Top and then going with the wax. I also use clear and colored waxes together. I apply the colored wax and then if I think there's just too much color, then I add a little clear to take away some of that colored wax. So they work really well together. Here are the candlesticks, completely dry, and I absolutely love them, but we're gonna use a little bit of white wax to get into all that detail. They'll still have that moody, dark look to them, but the white wax will get into all those details and really make all the details pop. I apply just a nice even coat of the white wax. I do have uh, cut up pieces of paper towel next to me and that is what I'm going to use to wipe away the excess wax. So once I apply uh, just a nice even coat, I'm going to then wipe it away and I work in sections. So I start on the bottom and I work my way up and it just gives me better control. I hope that I've inspired you guys to try something a little bit more dark and moody. Normally I'm so colorful and bright, uh, but the last few videos I have been going a little bit more neutral. So uh, this week though, guys, I need to get into my booths. Uh, this weekend is uh, the vintage shop hop in our area. I have a flipped Yeo Goats booth, but I do need to get in to antique up and over at Water Street Vintage and really stock up my booths. And believe me, I have a lot of stuff to go into all those booths. So tonight, um, after my live, I'll be pricing like crazy. Uh, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I will be in those booths flipping away. So Friday's video is definitely going to be the booth flip. I'll probably give you a tour of all three booths after I get that all done. And then Monday, I'm back to thrift flips. Um, and if you guys miss the news, I am launching my very own podcast. The video podcast portion will be here on YouTube. And then if you are into podcasts, just listening, I will have those on all the podcast platforms as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and we will see you guys then on Friday and you have a great week. Bye.